all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Wakefield, which will prove some class going into this quarter final. Strathallan will get us underway. And Barry will take contact just outside the 15 here as the sun beats down on our commentary box. Brody all the way out to Bavastock. Great check inside by Bavastock and a top finish. Oh, it's in that mall, Matt Black of St. Joe's with that yellow card. He is missed. I said he was, and that, that caused this brilliant bit of play from Strathall. And they knew. But St. Joe's come up short. Bonnets. Penalty advantage, picked at the base once more, Anson Joes. It was a great carry from Harrison Smith, that initial one, it made a lot of metres. Two points added for St. Joseph's College. So, St. Joseph with a lot of time to get something together. Slatter will get us underway. Midfield on the far side. Good direct running from Strathallan once more. That is short. <laughs> Dreadful chat, it's too early. Thompson, from in front of the post, adds three points for St. Joseph's College, 10-5, the score. Game, but Behind Dulwich changing camp. kits for the Sunday might be due to a clash we don't know but Dulwich kicking off and they're on the left-hand side of your screens yesterday in the review show that look this is a two-day tournament these lads all go back to the hotel Dulwich running through here number 13 just goes over Tain possession and a few phases later they go through Slippy hands, but they managed to use a couple of offloads, and yeah. that's a brilliant pacey run on that left hand side. And then they actually just break and they come through and cover those tackles. It's a strong kick, and it is over. And what did you make in that first half? Yeah, we were just talking at half time, weren't we? We just didn't expect Dulwich to be seemingly as dominant as they have felt in this game. We thought there'd be a little bit more of a, a mix within it, but there? they thought they would have taken that That's benefit from yesterday. That perhaps Dulwich are going to become out the dominant winners here. Tom Reed's decision isn't going the way he wanted to, as Dulwich have just gone over. Lead once again. Yeah, just that strong maul again. We knew it's a great option in their arsenal. They can just bring it through and as you watch the replay there. Look at the, <laughs> look how pleased they are. What it means to some of these lads, it's just intense, isn't it? We spoke about the legacy, but wearing that Dulwich shirt in the St. Joe's Festival, you're a scary side. You've always got that power, you've always got that dominance. There we go. All right, okay, look, we've seen it all here. How good are these? I believe that the aubergine is particularly popular at St. Joe's this year. So if you are in the locality, get down here and get yourself a bucket, get yourself some budgie smugglers, and we will get you back to the action right now. Thank you, Joe. Well, budgie smugglers aside, we've uh, got a big bust up here between two heavyweights, Kirk and Denston. Two teams that find themselves in very similar frame and stature. Of Perkins wastes no time, potentially sees some space out wide. They could pull it here. Denson's still going. It's a score. Dan Green. Yeah, exactly. They know exactly what they need to do. You can see here, kick taking the quick tap. Kirkham having to scramble their defence to try and cover on the outside. And it's a strong carry. Backs himself. Gets himself over the line for the first try. They want to go far into this tournament. And well, it looks like they were about to. But Roberts could catch Not on to this here. It's going to be a foot race for the line. Archie Dowds could get there. And he does. Referees conferring. Try's been given.
Back we are then. This game lying in the balance. Dowd, the try scorer, gets us back underway. Heading directly towards Oli Musk in the sort of circumstances. Struck well, struck through. Three points added. Kirkham lead now 8 5. Good pick. Tension recycle. So much space out wide. You could throw a blanket over the Kirkham defenders at the moment. Everyone inside the posts. Still though, they're going to go with the forwards as he goes down. Hold on. Pulls. To a clear ground, I guess. Okay. Oh, the assistant referee confirms it. He has a grounding. Humongous moment for Denson. Yeah, a nod from the referee uh, the there, just to let him know that if he takes all the time available, that will be full time. <laughs> just watching the replay here. Seconds. Let's find out who got this final touch. Come on. My pick for player of the tournament, Dan Stevenson, will be playing for Newcastle on the other pitch today up against the very impressive Hampton side who are undefeated this year. Kick deep to begin with by Wellington. And to return straight away, touch found excellently well. Excited to see now with the, uh, as you mentioned, with the win now behind Trinity's backs, how they make the most and obviously almost give a lesson perhaps to Wellington in terms of how to use that wind advantage and how to get across the line with the lion's share of territory. 22. He's so strong, isn't he? So strong both in defence and attack. Bellamy goes to the short side and Trinity are flooding through the gap. It's a great running line on that far channel. Brought down just five metres short. Thank you, Jamie. But try given. Well, Trinity have reached over the line and have opened on. the scoring. A tough kick to come, but now, again, very, very hard for Wellington from here, knowing that a converted try will now be needed to win this game. I believe it's Max Farrell on the far side, the number 14, who just crept over the line. And you've wait standing over that as they drive towards the line. And that's the score <laughs> straight from the penalty. <laughs> that's one way of doing it. That's David Bampo has driven over. Support of his forward pack, Kane Fleury in there, putting in a shoulder to drive him over the line. There's so much size in this Trinity pack. How do you stop it? I mean, he's got a great body position there. Bellamy pierces the upright. And 12-10, the score right will sit. How are you feeling about this game? Um, I'm very, fairly confident for this game. I mean, in training before, the boys are very up for it. So, I'm excited to see what happens. We're back underway here for the second half, and it is Whitchurch. They kick off from left to right in this game, and the first error comes straight away off the kickoff. Oh, coming forwards. Stalin trying to steal that ball, but not doing so legally. Oh, he's driving forwards, getting close. A metre away from the try line now. Advantage offside. Playing advantage. He's over the line. Yes. Is it a try? Yes, it is. <laughs> Goodness me. What absolute drama here at the end. As you watch the replay here. Oh, that, that, that's incredible. I can't believe that. Try and pick out the man who did it. I think it's your number five. Time you run. Plays his rugby at Racing 92 back in France. No academy setup. 
kicked short for Hurst to be a point to chase and claimed off the kickoff. Top start for Hurst College. Out the back, into the hands of Tussler. Fantastic line run by Arthur Kemps in the number 17. He's now at the base, but flicked once more. Max Cannon playing at seven today. This is lovely play, though. St. Joseph's it's College just not aware of the, the loose man. He just wandered into the wide channel. Hugs the touchline well. So Smart bit of play from Hurstbury Point. Rugby. It's the bowl semi final and it's the host St. Joseph's College up against Hurstbury Point. Johnny Milko commentary is Dan Murphy. Dan, what would you make of that first half? Well, just about to say it was a game of Contact pressure and. and Line. And, uh, um, Alex a few changes of the shirt numbers in recent times, but uh, Hurst with point get it underway. This Stop time the ball is brought down legally, but they go crashing on the short side. And the score. St. Joe's did a great job defending the mall, but it was what they did afterwards. There was a space on the short side, and they talk about those hold fold decisions, and that's what happened there. And they picked. Ready, gents. Archie Dowd will get this game underway. It goes high into it for its guys. Disturbing satellites and also well, your boys at the moment are under the cosh and away. Archie has oh. to can go. LJ. But hopefully the boys can make it back. Well, this is what happened. Driving more was splintering yeah, and rumbling lines. away and well. Eckendall said, you know what, I think I can do it for my own, on my own from here. And this, that you decide to gamble that little bit more. And well, it's cost them three points. Jack Lloyd stuck up the jumper. Through the mark. And away they go. Kirkham rumbling towards the line. RGS Wickham doing all they can illegally. Referee may even the try there and then. Time off. Bread and butter stuff that is the heart. from Kirkham Grammar. Yeah, it was a great, great effort from the pack there. Um, yep. Yeah, that driving wall has worked quite well for us quite a few times this season. And yeah, it once again, doesn't fail us. Kirkham struck ever so well. And it's straight through. <laughs> Well, Stonehouse gets us back underway. I tell you what, you don't get many better restarts than that. It's already come back to Lloyd, and they could set away here. Could step and turn from Cam Martin. Through the mark. Still going, heading towards the line. I think it's a break. But hope, well, I'm still hopeful in the lads. I think they can turn this around, definitely. I think, yeah, they're a good bunch. We're a good team, and yeah, we can make anything happen. This was the try, the rolling mall. Roberts goes himself. Can he find it? Yes, he does. That's great for Moshan. Uh, for Barber. <laughs> Dare I say, almost confirmed. Don't yeah, I think to. Barber's boots has been very good this season, so one under the sticks is a guarantee from him. Let's hope he don't, doesn't miss it now. Yeah, I hope I hope haven't. One step. Gets it. There we go. Kirkham back in front. I'm an upper six student at the moment, and I play back row. Right. Awesome. And yourself? Hi, I'm Henry Malfood. Oh, I've been from this match. I've been withdrew for injury, so it's a shame. But Red. Can't wait for the lads to get stuck into them. Who will lift the De La Salle Trophy? as we get back underway here for the second half. Millfield kicking off from right to left on your screens. And the ball bounces up into the hands of Millfield. Popped through, lovely little play. And this is how clinical Millfield can be. Can they get into the corner? And he collects his own kick. 
and dots it down. Same stature, with very different playing styles. I'm sorry, Ollie. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he can forgive you. You've given him plenty of pra pra praise now. As you can just see Millfield just falling uh, to ground now. It's where the off. advantage came from. Yeah! <laughs> falling silent once again here on pitch one. A clean strike. And the ball sails through the posts. It hasn't worked out for them, but they find themselves a the shield final. Time to win, win some silverware, and we are underway. Whitchurch boots a ball. Get it out, cleared. Quags Wakefield happy seeing more of the kickers, Set which is something I've seen at 50-22. What's been the main thing you've noticed? Give us it, this rollout could be a try here. Whitchurch working really hard on that left-hand side. And they've touched it down brilliantly. Oh, and Whitchurch working really hard. And that hard work has been rewarded in a brilliant score by their number 11. Yeah, going back to answer your question, I, I think <laughs> the quality on show, uh, and you probably hate to come to a tournament and uh, or see so many rugby games without box kicks. Uh, I think we've probably seen... ...completely change, even in the two days. Competition gets shortened down to that 20-minute format. And wait for with a brilliant nudge, and it's fallen into the Whitchurch hands. Through they go, striving forwards. What a score this might be. Can they go over? They do. Is it down? Is it down? Kindly towards him. He knew in that moment that he was through on and no one was stopping him. One step did about three Wakefield men rolling over towards the, towards the try line. Fraser Britton standing over this one. Sets himself straight through the uprights. National Schools Ooh. Festival, the first final of many. It's a shield final. <laughs> Whitchurch with a really strong performance in that first half. Two tries to the good. The take. Through they go. Just before the line. One more it might be, it is. Score that is. Ethan Evans of Whitchurch finds the try. What do you make of that? Yeah, I think uh, Gold Run's probably lucky to be still on the pitch, given that the, he is. To almost solidify what might be the Shield win. Fraser Britton, once again, confident. Some we knew and some are, are new, uh, you know, uh, are just, oh, here we go. Whitchurch yeah. through again, what a try that will be. <coughs> Another score for Whitchurch. Almost two hands on the trophy at this point. Yeah, he's really enjoyed his rugby, but um, yeah, that's that's why we come up here um, ourselves and a number of universities, a to catch up with the people that we've already been in contact with and the the directors of rugby coaches. But it's an opportunity to board, catch yeah. parents and new. Showing up in this festival, we've seen teams being sent back ten. We've seen teams not going ten. Yeah, it's an, an interesting no, one, no, and no, it's becoming uh, tactics for people is, is play it quick and, and get that. Uh, you, gives you an opportunity to score. Second. Yeah, it's a brilliant try yeah. from Wakefield. Yeah, thank you. Strong yes. and confident just to go Come over on, and get some more points on the board. Yeah, 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 I've told them. Yeah. for Dulwich College. Picked out well by St. Joe's. And they go to the backs. Chip and Chase. In search of Tom Chamier. And Chamier 
touches down. Russell Cox searching for front ball and the ball is set and secured. And they go rumbling towards the line, brought short. down just short, but the ball is available. Oh. Thompson goes fishing, but picked by Delafontel. Delafontel short, short once more. Good decision making from the front row, but tapped down. In love with me. We'll see here. It is indeed Matt Blacker who scored for St. Joseph's College. Quick thinking from the number one. Great connection and a good conversion. And Fourth place playoff for the bowl competition, the second tier competition here at St. Joe's. Slatter will get us underway with a great kick well, that's been knocked on by Dulledge and Meinhardt's underneath it. Lovely shot. Blacker is short. De La Fontaine is over the line. Try given. The end of the day, but in truth, it was powerful leg drive and great body height, something De La Fontaine has excelled at all season. No, all right, Excellent you. leg drive. Great strike by Jimmy Thompson. Driving short. towards the line, short once more. And this time, Dulledge make it down. Excellent nudge. Great line and length. St. Joseph's College are in need of a response. It's all over uh, on pitch two. Seconds. Make sure they're all behind. First be a point of. And on this side. And 15. Black ready. These two teams have had a, a mixed bag here at St. Joe's, but it doesn't matter now. Nothing else matters now. Plate final. And it's Lloyd McHugh and Peters. There's Walder out the back door. McHugh and Peters. Yes. Lovely line cut. Superb work from Will Spring it. Yeah, that was a beautiful start from the boys. I'm really glad they came out and showed us what Welly Rugby is all about. This is a much better start. Well, we'll spring it. It'd be really interesting to hear about this. How much do you speak about opposition before you're heading into a game like this? Where How can Kirkham respond, though? Could come through the likes of Roberts, who already makes dents in that black and yellow wall. And now three points. He does. It's hard and true. Forwards in a row, more like. Good lie out from Kirkham, and it was uh, Darren Lowe who rose highest. Inside ball, Effin Edwards on the hard line. Cut straight through. That pocket, make sure he doesn't do the same again. He's done it, I think, three times now. So, uh, hopefully, uh, our defense opens their eyes a bit. Well, this is a very crucial kick for Barber, who pretty much needs to slot it if uh, Kirkham are to. Trinity, though, the new kids on the block, they look like they've got in form, but <laughs> you can never count out Millfield School. This day, this game has everything to it. Put him down! Ebsworth Put him gets down. the ball away to Howlett. Timmins knocks down the first man, is in behind, oh, and it could be the new man, Cottrell in the corner! Yes. What a finish! Gives a big get off the bus and the handling out wide. Cotterell in support could have gone to one, two, three players. Pert Smith did well to put pressure on Cotterell to make it. Could be about to bury Trinity in their first appearance at the St. Joseph's College Festival. 
Stefan Emmanuel has pierced the upright and won the game for Millfield. For the first time in the tournament's history, we have consecutive champions on the biggest stage that schoolboy rugby has to offer. Millfield have done it Thank yet again. They are eight-time champions here at Belstead Road. Well, Wellington's one of their biggest, biggest rivals are just heading up now to receive the De La Salle Trophy. And you mentioned the use of the squad. You mentioned going all the way and leaving everything out there. And um, Millfield weren't talked about. Well, 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 they're always talked about, but they didn't seem to be talked about by our panel of experts here very much in their quest to retain the trophy. 